November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. I'm glad you stayed with me. I'm still on the Instrument Mastery series, and this episode is number eight. I'm going to talk about the compass this time, because uh, I said I needed to in the last one. The compass is one of those required instruments because the FAA thinks that you need to know which direction you're heading. And they're right, because if they issue a instruction to you, then you need to be able to turn to that heading. Guessing's not good enough. It's also nice to know which way you're headed to get where you'd like to go, especially at night. As I mentioned in my heading indicator video, you know that the compass isn't really ideal and it suffers from several errors which will show up on a test and in real life. I'm not going to spend much time though on how the compass works. It's magnetized to always point towards magnetic north all the time. Magnetic north is not coincident with true north and it's shown on charts by these magnetic variation lines that I covered in my VFR maps video, which are actually called charts, not maps. Magnetic north moves around, and the charts and numbers on the runways need to be updated every so often. Runway 422 might become runway 523 after a while. Runways are aligned with magnetic north rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. So, using your compass, you can know which runway to land on. When you look at a compass, it looks backwards. It's not intuitive as a heading indicator, which is also known as a directional gyro. But it has to be backwards though because you're reading it from the back side and the casing's actually rotating around the compass. So just don't look at it and expect a right turn when you'd actually be having to turn left. So you're going to be tested on all the different errors of the compass. So let's talk about those now. Unless you're flying straight and level at constant speed and with your left hand in the air and right shoelace tied in a double knot, then the compass won't read correctly. The first error is magnetic variation, as I mentioned just a little bit ago, and it's shown by the magnetic variation lines on the chart. It's not really an error with the compass though, it's an error with the earth. At least these lines are all charted so you know what the error should be as you fly. You can subtract easterly variations and add westerly ones from your true course. I remember this by thinking of a capital E as a bunch of minus signs stacked on top of each other, and I'll cover those more when we get to flight planning. Variation does not depend on aircraft heading. Now deviation does. Deviation is the next type of error, and we're all familiar with this. Magnets are thrown off by things that create or disturb a magnetic field. Your compass will read, and it'll have a little card on the front that says what the deviation is for each heading. But you know, if you place a wrench or a Tesla coil next to your compass, it's gonna be thrown off, so don't do that. Now, there's magnetic dip. You might see this on a test. I think I remember seeing it on my commercial exam, but it's not really of any practical significance, but you need to know it and kind of how it works for your test. So, magnetics, you know, magnets wanna follow the magnetic field, and only at the magnetic equator is your compass level. As you get closer to the poles, it wants to follow the field and it starts to actually tilt down. But magnets uh, in the compass, they're weighted and rigged such that they can really only rotate in the horizontal plane. However, this arrangement of weights and rigging causes some other errors to show up that you're gonna need to know for your test. The first off is if you're making a turn to the north, your compass will lead your turn and you'll need to stop your turn before you reach your target. Typically, the rule of thumb is about 15 degrees plus half your latitude. This is why we like directional gyros better. But for example, if you're turning left and trying to hit 360, and you're in the vicinity of 38 degrees north, then when should you stop your turn, long pause? Well, it's 15 degrees plus 38 over two, which is a whopping 34 degrees before your target heading. In this case, you'll stop your turn at 034 degrees. Now, if you're making a turn toward the south, you'll have to turn past your turn because the compass lags a turn to the south. I remember this lead lag north-south because we typically say north before south and we typically say lead before lag. So it's easy for me to remember what to do on a compass. Lead lag north-south. Now, there's also a little acceleration error. However, this error only applies to east-west headings. North-South headings have no acceleration effect. If you're flying east or west and you accelerate, it shows a turn to the north. 
If you decelerate, it shows a turn to the south. We typically say accelerate before decelerate, and we typically say north before south. So you can remember this easily. Uh, but if you need a mnemonic, it spells ANDS. Accelerate north, decelerate south. Now I just need a way to remember how to spell mnemonic. Silent letters are stupid. The combinations of all these errors causes the compass to oscillate in its case. The average of all these oscillations is your magnetic heading. So hopefully, now you can see why the DG is so much more useful than the compass. It's prone to all these errors. There are some compasses that have a vertical card that are linked through gears and things to an electronic sensor, and those are awfully nice, but I've never been lucky enough to use one. Now you know what you need to know for your FAA exam about compasses. You'll need to know all this stuff to fly well. If your vacuum system fails during instrument flight, you'll have to use the compass for your headings. You'll need to remember how it behaves so that you can fly your routes and approaches accurately with a failed DG. You also need to know uh, standard rate turns and how to hit your headings accurately. Compasses aren't hard to use once you get used to them, but they're simply less than ideal. Accelerate north, decelerate south. North lead, south lag. That's what you need to remember. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the instrument that I've wanted to do since before I began this series, and we're finished now with the basic flight instruments, and we're on to navigation. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll really help me out, and you can also help me out by leaving comments down there. You'll be notified when the next video is out when you subscribe, and stay with me on 121 Point Mike.